other uh, elements uh, to put on the table about uh, how to uh, help the creative process. A recent study in uh, neuroscience has uh, shown that creative uh, um, performance in uh, diversion thinking task, which means you know you have to generate uh, as much as a possible uh, idea as as possible. We have seen a difference between uh, highly creative individuals and uh, less. Uh, creative individuals in terms of uh, the brain, uh, the alpha uh, uh, waves in, in the brain. And the power in, in the alpha uh, brain, which is from 8 to 12 hertz, uh, are uh, very important uh, um, uh, for divergent thinking task. The, the participants that are very creative uh, develop a lot of alpha power. Uh, in, and, and in particular in the right uh, hemisphere of the brain. So uh, this is something that appears to be linked to some sort of state of relaxation and internal thoughts. So the attention is uh, diverted to internal uh, thoughts instead of the external environment. And uh, from, from this study, uh, we have seen recently, I think in 2018 or 19, another study that tried to um, induce this kind of uh, uh, alpha wave or alpha band in the brain. So they trained uh, the, the participant to, uh, by uh, you know, uh, objective uh, methods that is uh, well known, which is the biofeedback uh, technique, to generate uh, the uh, alpha band uh, by trying to, by the, the power of this, uh, the production of this alpha band to move uh, um, uh, an image on a computer screen. So uh, the image cannot be moved unless you have developed this alpha band. And after this training, a short training, uh, because in some studies they, they need uh, several sessions. This was the first one that showed that a short training of developing this alpha band can increase the um, performance, the creative performance in um, uh, diversion thinking task, which means uh, producing several ideas uh, using one uh, stimulus, for example, you know, thinking about uh, uh, different uses of uh, an object or uh, something. So it's absolutely important to create an environment where we can uh, um, encourage uh, this uh, state of the brain uh, that is ca characterized by the alpha band. So it's uh, interesting to see that uh, people who, who are very creative in this divergent thinking task uh, have also a sort of desynchronization between the, the right hemisphere and the left one. <coughs> they produce the alpha, uh, um, the, 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 this alpha band, and also mostly in the right hemisphere, which is uh, uh, known that is linked to verbal uh, processing and uh, creativity. Uh, and of course, uh, there are links between the two hemispheres. But for this type of task, this desynchronization is very important and ha has been seen for the highly creative uh, participants in, in these kind of studies. Is there a way to generate this alpha, alpha waves? Uh... The, I, I, I think, um, uh, you know, if we look at uh, the brain activity, uh, the, uh, when we see, uh, when we, 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 we put electrodes on the brain and we notice that alpha uh, uh, band appears, you know, uh, it's, it's power in because there are several uh, uh, frequencies, but this uh, uh, alpha band appears in the occipital uh, regions. It means that the, 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 the participant or the subject um, is starting to be uh, less attentive. It's starting to uh, withdraw, you know. Look, uh, the attention uh, is um, uh, shifting from the external task toward internal thoughts. 
And in some cases, and this is what we I used to do uh, later, whenever we see alpha band, we say, okay, the driver, because we used to put electrode on, on, on uh, drivers or uh, aircraft pilot, they are starting to be asleep. They are falling asleep. So this is sort of a, a stage before, you know, you start. Uh, so in the creative domain, it's completely different. It's not only in the occipital region, which is, you know, the projection of the visual uh, um, sensory, but it's all around the brain, and in particular in the right, uh, right uh, uh, hemisphere. Does it mean that uh, daydreamers <coughs> are okay. creative well, people? As I said before, what you talked about um, made me think of a traditional uh, practice in yoga, which is called yoga nidra. And yoga nidra is a state, is a search for a state of consciousness between waking and sleeping. And it was developed uh, from ancient techniques, but in the in the 20th century by I think Satyananda. And the idea is to experiment a state of consciousness between. Uh, between waking and, and sleeping. I don't know if there has been some, some scientific uh, uh, explanation or uh, experiment with the, uh, yoga nidra, but I, I've heard recently that it was used for uh, uh, treating uh, in the US Army for, for uh, soldiers for post-traumatic uh, uh, stress. In, in the 80s and 90s, uh, Francisco Varela, which is a, a neurobiologist, uh, was one of the first uh, scientists to study the effect on cognitive uh, processes of uh, the, the work of meditation, of traditional meditation. He was the first to do experiment at La Salpetriere in, in, in Paris. He has wrote many things, uh, a few books about, about that. What is interesting here for uh, these uh huge number of kids or adults that were kids uh, unhappy at school because they were feeling so much unable to sustain the fact of looking at the board and, and staying within the explanation of the teacher. You know, people that were the, the flying brains, you know, uh, that are so, uh, you know, <laughs> for which it, it is tough to, 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 to follow at school. I mean, in a way, it's interesting because it means that guys, those that were daydreaming and that found it so difficult to sustain uh, consistent attention in, in, a, in, a, in front of a teacher, maybe you are creative brains, you know, it, it could be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, uh, there, there are studies that are looking at uh, attentional deficit disorder, uh, which we can see uh, in uh, some uh, uh, children and even adults, and there are uh, some links with uh, with uh, this problem to uh, control your attention. So mind wandering, because this is what you you have been uh, uh, mentioning. Um, the, 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 there was a very nice study that used the fMRI. So when we scan the brain uh, and. Uh, it, something has been discovered accidentally. It wasn't really the aim of the, the study. So you, you, you ask a patient or participant to lay down and their, their, their brain is scanned by fMRI. And <clears throat> the control uh, condition, because we need always uh, you know, to compare experimental and the control condition. The control condition, uh, in this control condition, the participants were asked to lay down and uh, do nothing, you know, just uh, uh, lay down. So to have like uh, uh, the baseline. So from one study to another one, they have observed that the brain, when you have nothing to do, no external task, nothing to, to do, there is always the same network of regions in the brain that are activated. And this brain, uh, this network, which has been called the default mode, it's like, you know, this is the way the brain uh, uh, works when <laughs> it has nothing to do, uh, has been, um, uh, is completely, uh, uh, is correlated negatively with another network of the brain that is called the executive control network. Uh, 
uh, which is linked to the frontal lobes, and uh, I want to go uh, in details in, uh, in the anatomy of the brain, but uh, they work in opposite way. When one is activated, the other one is deactivated. So when we are mind wandering, the, the default mode is activated and it's linked because we are still, you know, discovering uh, the, the, uh, this default uh, network mode. Uh, uh, it's linked to uh, semantic memory, episodic memory, so that's things that are related to our past and experiences. So we, when we have nothing to do, we start thinking about, uh, we, we, uh, we look at autobiographical details about ourselves. Uh, we think also about, we can do simulation for future uh, things. So these, uh, the parts in the brain that are activated when we have nothing to do are involved in autobiographical memory. It's the same one. Uh, they are involved in uh, thinking about the future thinking about the, the perspective of other people and also making decisions uh, about moral dilemma. So it's something that is very important in the creative process to allow this mind wandering, to do nothing, just sit, think, uh, explore. Uh, th this, and this is linked to this default uh, network mode. One, once we have a task, when you, you for example, you, 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 the, the participants have uh, in, on the screen something to do, you know, uh, to solve a, a problem, the default uh, network mode, the one that is involved in this uh, mind wandering, is completely deactivated and another uh, network is activated, which is called the executive control mode. What is the role of this executive control mode? This, this is the, uh, the, the part of, of the brain that control our attention. So it diverts attention from internal thought to the task. So to stay focused on the task, we have to switch off something because the resources are, are, are low. So we have to switch off something and direct it to another uh, uh, external task. But the interesting thing, because there are a lot of debate about creative, for creativity, we need to have spontaneous uh, uh, ideas, we need to be uh, uh, disinhibited, but at the same time, we need to control our ideas. We need to control uh, uh, to, uh, the co intentional control uh, will help us to avoid, you know, coming up with the, uh, the usual stuff, you know, the usual ideas. Uh, uh, so we need to inhibit this first idea that are, you know, uh, common uh, ideas. We, so th there is also the debate uh, for creativity. Do we want to have something that we are relaxed and, you know, we have all the freedom to, or we need also to control our thoughts? So this debate has been recently, in 2018, there is a very nice study done by a neuroscientist where uh, they, they have uh, discovered that there is a link between the executive control mode and the uh, default uh, uh, mode uh, network. So to make it simple, when you do a creative task uh, where you have to, to think about different alternatives, the, the attention that is controlled by the executive con uh, control mode is shifted from the external to internal thought. This attention is like, you know, help you to explore. Uh, different aspects of the brain, different uh, parts of the memory, uh, and they work together. They are connected by another network, so without entering in, in details, but there is this uh, beautiful uh, uh, connectivity in the brain, left and right. One will help generate alternatives, and another one will, at the same time, try to help you to go further in, uh, in the concepts, you know, in this network of concepts, because in our memory, the concepts are linked. And the first one that came to mind are the, the strongest links. So to be able to explore more concepts, the attention is directed to internal thoughts. So both these two uh, uh, opposite uh, mode or networks work together when creativity, when we have to be creative.
So the, 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 the lesson that we could take as screenwriters from what you're saying, which is fascinating, is that uh, trying too much is in a way can be an obstacle, you know? Like if you consider what you have to solve, the generation of new ideas, if you consider it's a task, as a task, it's, if it's too much of a task, it, 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 it is an obstacle to, to your creative process? Do you have to, you know, letting go is the key or is it, is it a mixture, mixture of both? There are two different aspects in the creative process of screenwriters. When you think about uh, the first idea, the concept you would like to develop, you have, and you want to generate different concepts and then go further in elaborating and developing. And when you, you are stuck, you have problems. So there are different stages. But at the first stage of the creative process, when you have an idea, you start by uh, reading, uh, interviewing, thinking, uh, watching movies, uh, doing. So you collect information and you think about uh, your your subject. So it's uh, it's help you. You know, the mind wandering, the the daydreaming, the 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 stillness, nothing to do, just thinking. So this time should be allowed. Uh, because it helps the uh, the exploration of uh, of different parts of the brain. It helps, you know, thinking when we are sitting and thinking about the the story we want to to, to, to talk about. Uh, so we we are taking the perspective of the the character. So these parts are very uh, well known in the brain. We know where this happened, and it happens in the default network mode, which is activated once we, are, we have nothing to do. If I understand well, it's a kind of go-between. I mean, in a way, yes. you have an external object and task which, re, which you have to analyze, understand. We could be, for instance, a topic. But afterward, you have to dialogue within, in a kind of internal, uh, not task, but internal reflecting, which uh, created this kind of alpha waves and that interact with the external object in, in a kind of exploration, internal exploration with ideas, memories, sensation, and all, all uh, concerns uh, creativity. So it can reach this kind of external object in introjecting it. Is that? Uh, so I, I think uh, what you, you are saying is, uh, is right, because uh, uh, different studies show that um, very creative individuals in any domain have the ability to, to switch from one state to another one in a, a very smooth way. Uh, which, which is, you know, you can have this uh, mind wandering, this exploration, this uh, internal thoughts, and at the same time you can uh, uh, switch to uh, very controlled mode. Yeah, it's a kind of go between. Yes, I think. Yeah, and it happens in flexible way. Mm. And I think uh, ex experience also helps a little bit. Uh, because uh, there is a recent study that, that shows that with uh, Training in writing, you know, when you have an experience in, in writing, uh, uh, the grey matter in, in the brain, in the regions that are involved in semantic and verbal uh, uh, creativity, are uh, expand. Uh, with uh, the, um, they, they developed an index of uh, experience that uh, involve using uh, the number of hours you write per week. Mm -hmm. And the years, the number of years you have been writing. Uh, so if you, ha uh, uh, if you are a young writer or if you don't have any skills in writing so you are, uh, or you, you are not uh, used to write, uh, uh, compared to someone who has 10 years or 20 years, there is a really a great difference in terms of the, the, the grey matter uh, in the brain. Uh, that uh, There is a gradient of increase and a, a really positive correlation between uh, the, uh, the gray matter and uh, the experience of writing. So things happen in the brain. It's not static, it's really dynamic. We can improve things by, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
perseverance. It's something that is important in creativity. It's not just one off. It's we have we have to to try hard and really. Uh, I don't I don't want to use the, the 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 word struggle or suffer, but it's part of the game. You you need to persevere. You need to overcome obstacles. You need to to and this this. Uh, Personality characteristics of perseverance mm. is very important. It's a kind of endurance, anyway, creativity. Absolutely, mm. and you, uh, you 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 develop your experience mm. in, in that way. So it means, which which goes, I mean, which is uh, completely coherent with what we experience with writers. It is a muscle. Yes. And what is interesting <laughs> is that often uh, writers that are beginning in the field of writing, uh, they start with one idea being very protective with that idea, thinking if I start to introduce other ideas around that idea, I will lose it, you know? They are scared uh, and then they become completely, they, they lack flexibility. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's exactly the opposite, meaning that, and it, it's interesting because that's our experience with the hundreds of writers is, uh, yeah. is then very uh, convergent with what you're saying. It's that the more you generate ideas, the more you allow yourself uh, to open the field of possibilities, Absolutely. Uh, the more your muscle develop, and then uh, the, the, the better and the deeper you will dig. You know, it's not, it's not putting you in danger, the fact of letting other stuff come to you. Yes, ab absolutely. And there are uh, there are well-known biases in uh, decision making, like, for example, the availability biases. So something you have heard recently is more available in your brain than something that it is in, in, uh, in the past. So uh, when, when you think about an idea and you are really sure about this idea, it could be uh, biased by something that happened recently. Uh, so, th th and there are other biases uh, in uh, our decision making. So, one of the the most important aspects in the creative uh, mind, uh, in terms of personality, is openness. Be open to experiences. Uh, so, if you are uh, you have your idea and you don't want to explore anything else, maybe it's a lack of openness. To, to let's 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 try other things. Let's look at uh, maybe I can improve my my original idea by being open to other. Uh, so so this uh, personality trait is very very important. Being open to experience is what make your memory. It's what you know because experience is is. Uh, you know, it's you are uh, developing your uh, memories. You are developing, you know, you are investing in uh, in in uh, your memories. So concepts are developed. And uh, do you mean that the more experienced a writer is, the smoother he can or she can switch from the creative stage to the analytical stage, or there is a fluidity in the way? It works. Uh, from the the study we have done with the script writers, it seems that uh, experience with one type of uh, of writing, for example, if you you write for uh, uh, for a short uh, film or uh, a long one, uh, and you have long experience, you develop automatic processes. So it's I mean even if the process is complex, you do it in automatic way. It's something that became, you know, part of your brain. And we, what we, we know is we have, uh, uh, it's like, you know, driving. Uh, when you start driving, you, you have to pay attention to everything. You cannot have a discussion. You cannot uh, look at your uh, uh, phone screen uh, and so on. Once you became uh, expert in driving, you can do a lot of things because the resources that are involved in the driving uh, task are lower than when you are starting. So for writers, if uh, you have experience with one type of writing, so you develop automatic processes and they have, and it's like, you know, um, it's in every domain. These, uh, this is the way the brain uh, works. It's, if we can make something automatic, it's the better. It's like, you know, sort of, um, uh, the, uh, 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 lazy laziness. It's the laziness of the brain to uh, 
anything we can uh, auto, uh, make it automatic, we will do it because it will save the resources because the amount of attentional resources is not infinite. So you have to, uh, to devote it to maybe something you don't know very well or something you want or even, you know, not an external task, to internal yeah. thoughts. So, but then doesn't that kind of go against what we were saying about then putting to get new ideas and creativity to generate like more exciting thoughts and putting yourself outside your comfort zone? So, in a way, learning things from scratch, like this kind of ad idea of adversity, maybe goes against the fact that then we're better once we've practiced. Do you see what I mean? Um, you mean uh, the uh, diversity of no, experience? I, mean, fact, I'm, I guess if you're saying that kind of we can see evidence that we're more efficient, let's say, like as creatives, the more we practice, which obviously makes sense, the more you write, the more screenplays you write. But then also this, I mean, maybe there, maybe there are just different things, but this, these thoughts that we we're having yesterday about, but then you have to also like, let's say, take yourself out of your routine. Yes. So if you don't yes. have to write from six to nine, because try and write in an airport at 8 p.m., you know, something to then create new stim. I guess, what's the balance between kind of becoming experienced enough to develop the strengths of it, but then also not becoming mm. lazy in your own expertise? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's absolutely uh, right because uh, we need the memory to, to explore concepts. But at the same time, the memory can, can trap us in, mm. in the, mo the, the common uh, ideas or the common things we, we, we used to. So this is a really tricky question. And I think that... Uh, and knowing techniques, yes, exactly. You know, yes. like, I know that this works. Yeah, I know that absolutely. I can do this. I know I can fall into that. And uh, and, the, and this is why it's important to, to discuss with others. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they can trigger other concepts. They can, you know, uh, uh, help you to, uh, uh, you know, to leave your comfort, uh, comfort mm -hmm. zone. And in uh, a study that has uh, looked at... Uh, two studies. One uh, had looked at the history of uh, the teams that worked in uh, uh, game, uh, video games, from the beginning to the date of, of uh, the, the, uh, the publication of the study, and another one on uh, musical, uh, in the musicals. Uh, so, uh, what's, and they looked at the history of uh, the teams that worked on these uh, video games or these musicals. There are two, two different studies. Uh, and the thing is, uh, if you have uh, a game changer, for example, in the, the game video, a game changer needs to have two things. The diversity of the member of the team that worked on, on, uh, on, uh, on the game, which means that they have been exposed to diverse mm. experience, different type of game, different genre, uh, extremely diverse experience, but at the same time, they have to have some cohesions, which means they need to have members that know each other. Uh, it, because if you have great minds around the table, uh, it, it doesn't mean that the final product will be uh, outstanding. It could be uh, intriguing, it could be, uh, you know, uh, it, it doesn't, but if you have at the same time some sort of cohesion, what means, uh, what does it mean cohesion? It, it means that some member of these teams have worked in the past together. So you have been working together for one script, but you work again for maybe change the, the, the different type of, of film or, and then two, three years or ten years, you have been in another big team, but you know each other, you know how... So if someone, you know, doesn't know you and you know this person, you, you can say, okay, no, you can trust him, he's good. And it's it, an issue of trust. Yes. It's an uh, issue of trust, but if you know very well the, the team uh, in, in, uh, and you haven't been exposed to diversity, which is, uh, you, which is you, you end up with something very uh, uh, boring. I guess it's just a thought that you always have, you know, as, 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 a, as a writer, as a director, like, you know, do you, yes, like to continue working and to sort of immerse yourself, but also how do you keep yourself fresh, you know, and how do you kind of continue having, especially when your workload increases and you're working more and that's what you're 
aiming to do, but how do you still have the kind of like detachment to again not be this trained expert muscle, but also bring in the kind of it's openness, openness to experience. It's like you know, a sponge that is you know absorbing everything around you, and exposing yourself to to other experiences. Uh, what's make uh, I have a question about openness. Is openness a personality trait or is openness a skill that we can learn? Uh, it's a good question. Both. <laughs> uh, openness is a personality trait. So we, the, the, the tests, I'm not, you know, an expert in uh, uh, the differential psychology, but openness is one of the, the five uh, uh, dimensions of the personality. So uh, it's... Uh, but there is this model, a hopeful model, because, you know, when we talk about personality, it's something like, you know, you are stuck, you have it or you don't have it. But I, I prefer to have this humanistic approach mm. where you, you can think that we can develop things. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, there is this uh, uh, two, two models, deficit model, so you don't have it or you have it, uh, and um, uh, inhibition model. So you do have something, but it's, uh, you know, it's blocked and need to be, uh, someone need to help you, you know, to, uh, uh, for example, um, one of the blocks of creativity is the fear of failure. Uh, you don't want to try things because uh, you, you are afraid of failure. Uh, so the, the, I think uh, failing is the best way to deblock things. But you have to fail, as, uh, as we have said uh, earlier, in a cheap way. It's a, so it could be failing when you are studying uh, uh, in, in, in a film school. You try things, you fail, but it helps you, you know, to get, you know, okay, I know what is it. And I, uh, 20 years ago, I've been working uh, with a, a screenwriter, very experienced screenwriter, uh, and it was a young at that time, screenwriter. And um, she's, she's called Beatrice Rubinstein. She was, it's a tribute to her, what I'm gonna say. It's, it's, she was, she's been writing scripts in, since the end of the 40s, 1940s. And um, when we started to work together, uh, we were in her living room, uh, spending hours and hours and hours. And she told me like 20 times, uh, because I was stressed yeah. as a young writer about the fact that ideas could, you know, I had to keep ideas, I had to note them, I had to keep them on the book, you know, and uh, uh, I was stressed about, you know, having too many maybe. And, uh, and, um, and she was always telling me, which is then, she was a very trained muscle, you know, <laughs> as you were saying, you know, a very crafted screenwriter. And she, do, she would always tell me, please, Antoine, you'll bore me with your notes. Stop taking notes. We're just talking. Yeah. See what I mean? So it meant that for her, first of all, trusting the fact that you could open the field of possibilities as much as you want uh, uh, for quite a huge uh, period of time. It was like for a whole month, it was just talking, opening, opening, testing possibilities. Uh, and she was then, not only it wasn't stressful for her to add ideas to ideas, but it was also the fact that she was completely confident with experience that uh, populating our brains with possibilities uh, is also a way to select very naturally the best ideas. Because she was like, Don't, why do you take notes? The very best ideas, they're gonna stay, of course. You know? So it's, it's interesting because it was, for me, it was like one of the most trained brain that I've uh, seen because she's been you know, writing scripts for so many years. But she was very free mm. all the time. It was not just a procedure, you know? Mm. It was like, whew, it was a flying procedure all the time. And, and me as a young writer at that time, I was, I was afraid so by it, the procedure. Yeah, and, and this is uh, uh, the word afraid and stressed are very important in this uh, phase of uh, th uh, thinking. So it needs, and, and she, is, she was right to, to ask you to relax and stop, you know, trying to take note of everything. Because 
in, in, from what we have seen in, in the study about script writers, it's these first meetings with the, the, uh, the director or producer or other writers, uh, it's like a, a, a talking therapy. We, we have to start by knowing each other. To, we have to, to, to know the taste of uh, each other. We have to learn more things about, and we have to dream about things we want to do. We have to, to, to take this freedom because we are still not under the gun. We are not, you know, trying to develop uh, dialogues or scenes or whatever. Uh, so it, it is important to take this time and the openness, the trust, the, the pleasure to share ideas. All these things are very important to be more creative and to develop, develop abstract thinking. It's very, very important what you're saying because it seems that in the film, uh, in the field, sorry, of, of screenwriting right now, the amount of technique that people have is better and better, higher and higher. But it is not always taken seriously that we need a time, serious time in a way, to be free. We need that. And it's, it's important to say that it's not a romantic, thought to, to talk like that, that it's very efficient. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, there is this uh, a, a study that links the freedom from constraint and creativity. When you have the feeling, anything that helps you to get rid of constraint, you can take the constraint later on, you know, when you are starting to develop things. Because constraints have two, two roles. At this stage, the first stage, we are just thinking, uh, you need to get rid of constraints. It's like, imagine yourself, you have infinite budget to do this thing. So what, what are the things we can think about? So uh, the freedom from constraints in the beginning of the process of co-creating, uh, because, uh, you, you know, it's not only one person uh, creating, mm -hmm. this freedom of constraints, to, to give ourselves the ability to explore different things, to share uh, with a lot of pleasure and trust. And this is why you need to have some uh, atom uh, some uh, uh, sort of... Um, yeah, affinity. Yeah, yes, connection. affinities and connection with the person you, are, you, you will be working with. And uh, one, one script writer who, had, uh, uh, who is famous, I'm not uh, giving any name, uh, he said, okay, so when someone asks me to, to write for him or to write with him, uh, it takes time to see if I want to work with him or, or not. So uh, the first session, and he said, okay, the session, used, using the word session means something. It's like, you know, uh, psychiatrist or psychologist. So we meet and discuss to see if we have some, uh, if we can work together. I don't want to work with some masochistic uh, person or someone who um, knows exactly what he wants to do. And I will be just, you know, uh, filling the gaps. So I need to uh, see if I want to work with this person. But of course, he can afford. He's well known. I think he doesn't care too much about money. Uh, so it's completely different uh, mindset. Uh, but it's a very important to, to, if you want to work with someone, uh, you know, uh, trust uh, is very important, uh, pleasure to share things. So, th and this can be, uh, we talked about openness. So we, we can create this environment where we are open, when we can uh, uh, share with the, with the other. And, uh, it's the when, cohesion when, yeah. that you spoke before, yes. the cohesion yes. between two. When, yeah, when we organize workshops, Phase one is always established trust, and it's and, and, and you never spend too much time on that phase, you know. So uh, uh, because otherwise, when you start working with people having uh, being a bit you know suspicious about each other, it can suspicion can destroy everything. Absolutely.